Shama Behaya Huda, Uba Hut Saira Lisha Shalim, Kasa Son Vekasim Haha, Kahatan Vakata. Oh, Yishama Behaya Huda, Uba Hut Saira Lisha Shalim, Kasa Son Vekasa, Kahatan Vakata. Don't worry, you haven't got the wrong channel. It's me, John Ninja Casey. And today I'm drawing one of my Jewish brothers. I say brothers because they're really tight. I'm drawing his wedding portrait. Now he kamikaze me one day and said, Look, we don't want anything else but a drawing or a portrait or a painting of our wedding picture for our wedding. Talk about a way to get free artwork. But I couldn't say no. It was his wedding and he is my brother and, you know, my brother from another mother. But I couldn't say no. Love this guy. His wife is beautiful. This is a beautiful guy. I really enjoyed being at the wedding. It was crazy. I got to tell you, if you haven't been to a Jewish wedding, you haven't partied. But I digress. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is just walk us through the process of his portrait so that you can see my process and how I approach uh, drawing this portrait of him and his beautiful wife. Okay? So, without further ado, Let's get to it. Okay, so this is going to be on a 18 by 24 canvas. I'm going to tape off the sides which creates a framing effect after the painting is done. And next is the gesso. It's white, but I added a little gray to make it gray so that uh, the painting pops. Now, I start with the pencils. The pencils are looking pretty good. The bride wanted white and pink roses in the background, so I made sure to pencil those out. And after I laid down all the pencils, the next thing to do was to uh, coat it with a workable fixative uh, which for me ensures that the pencils really don't move because during the painting process the pencils could smudge and so on but with a workable fixative you can kind of put a, a workable coat of uh, protection on it that you can still work on and then go back in and start painting again and the painting even though you're painting the pencils it won't make um, a difference it won't move stay right where it is so you can put the details in where you have to and this is me putting in the details of the pink roses and also now drawing in the white roses and as I'm drawing in the white roses I'm realizing that they're taking a lot of attention from the, the bride and the groom so I had to kind of like tone it down with some white so after toning it down with some white I felt that you know, maybe it was good enough to not compete with the bride and the groom so I was able to start with the actual painting of the bride and the groom it's very important that when you're doing a painting like this that has a background and a foreground, it's always important to do the background first so that um, when you are doing the foreground, you can, you can paint over the background, but for, if you do the foreground first, then, and then you do the background, you're going to paint over the foreground and then have to go in and paint the foreground again after, uh, to, come to correct those paint overs. So, Always do the background first, and as a design concept for me, it's very important to do a lot of the roses on the bride's side because she is the superstar of the wedding, and this way it brings a lot of attention to her. That, and also I wanted to tone down the groom's side of the background because He's wearing a black suit and that also is very eye-catching. So I didn't want to put too many roses on his side because he's already getting a lot of attention because of his black suit. So um, as much as they are a couple in this, 
I wanted, because the bride is wearing white, I wanted her to stand out a lot more because she has um, a lot of like competition <laughs> with the groom and the roses. So the bride should not have competition in her own portrait. That's just not, that's just not fair. So uh, for the for the groom's face, I used a uh, pre-mixed flesh tones and that's one advice I give everybody that pre-mix your flesh tones this way you have them always ready to use as opposed to using just flesh tones that you make on the spot which can come out differently every time you mix a new batch so I always have like a few con I have a few containers of pre-mixed flesh tones as I mentioned before the groom's suit is black but because of the lighting there's a lot of gray and near white highlights for the bride I wanted to lay down the flat colors for her face and also her hands and also her hair because the dress was gonna be of course in all white and the hair, especially the hair, was going to go over the dress, so I wanted to get the dress out of the way. This is the same concept about doing the background first. And this is where you're putting it putting down the gray gesso came in handy because once I was doing the dress I only had to do the highlights because the gray gesso already took care of the shattering and the shading areas. Now it's time to work on the bride's skin which uh, Lose her arm, her hands, and her face. And again, I can't just stress enough how much having pre mixed skin tones made this so much easier, so much simpler to do.
doing these fingers at first caused a problem because on the source material, there were a lot of shadows on the fingers, so it made the fingers look like they were like these really big fingers, but it wasn't, it wasn't that way, it was just the shadows. And even when I put in the shadows on the painting, it also looked like the fingers were big, so I had to change that up by eliminating the shadows and just kind of letting the fingers hang there without any shadows. So although there were shadows in the picture, the shadows in the painting just made the fingers look thick as hell. <laughs> now for the big reveal. And here you have it, the finished product. Um, a few things that I did not do on camera uh, was I did add a shadow next to the bride which made her pop so much more out from the background because she blended a little bit too much into the background because of her the, the color of the dress and the color of the background but I added more gray to the background to dim it down a little bit and also I put a nice little shadow next to her which brought her out so much more powerfully so that was that worked out really well and I put a black border around it. Remember when I, I taped it up to make the illusion of a border? Well, I took off the tape and then I used that white area to just paint a black border around it, uh, giving it the illusion of a frame. This way the painting is basically framed already and all that is um, necessary is for them to hang it on their wall. So the, the paint framed the painting <laughs> if you will but that's that's it this is um my gift to you uh ben Sion and Racheli. um congratulations on your marriage i know this is a little late but you know my schedule was crazy i do appreciate you guys you know uh, having patience with me and so on so but thanks a lot um so I guess that's it, everybody. So this is Draw Ninja Casey saying, let's get back to the party. Let's go. <laughs>